From this presentation onwards, we are starting with this new topic that is rules of inference for quantified statements. And in this particular presentation, we will discuss two important rules of inference for quantified statements. So let's get started. Here is rule number one, that is universal instantiation. This rule is used to conclude that PC is true when for all x, Px is true. Here what we are saying, if for all x, Px is true, then PC has to be true. That means if for every x, Px is true, then for some c in that particular domain, pc has to be true. Obviously, this holds true, right? Because we are talking about that for every x, whatever the x you will consider, px will be true. Then we can also say that for some c in that particular domain, pc has to be true. This means if for all x, px is true, then pc has to be true, right? Now, let's discuss one problem related to universal instantiation in order to understand this in a better way. And also, we will see the application of universal instantiation. Here is problem number one. Determine whether the argument all students in this class understands logic. David is a student in this class. Therefore, David understands logic. Is correct or not? Here, obviously, you can see this is an argument. And here, we have two premises and one conclusion. Let us assume that Px denotes x is a student in this class and qx denotes x understands logic. From the first statement, we can write for all x, px implies qx. This is our first premise, right? All students in this class understands logic, which means for all x, px implies qx. Now from here, the second statement, David is a student in this class, we can write p david. This is second premise, right? From first, we can derive p david implies q david. Isn't that so? This is done by universal instantiation from one. Because we know that if for all x, px is true, then we can also say that for some c, pc has to be true. So here instead of c, we have David. So here we can replace this x by David. So this becomes p David and we can also replace this x by David. So this becomes q David. So we can say that p David implies q David by universal instantiation from one. Now from second and third, we can say q David is true. This holds true by the rule of modus ponens from second and third, right? If p is true and p implies q is true, then q has to be true. Isn't that so? So q David is true, which means that David understands logic. This means conclusion is derived from the set of premises. So we can say that our argument is valid. So this is the use of universal instantiation. Now let's discuss our second rule that is universal generalization. So here is our second rule that is universal generalization. This rule states that for all x, px is true given the premise pc is true for an arbitrary c. Here this is opposite of what we have seen previously. Here what we are saying, when pc is true for an arbitrary c, then for all x, px is true. Okay. So when pc is true for an arbitrary c, for all x, px has to be true. Here what we are considering, we are considering an arbitrary c. That means any c. We have randomly put some c inside p. If this is true, then this for all x, px has to be true. Obviously, you're considering an arbitrary c, some random c, right? If for some random c, pc is true, then for all x, px has to be true. This is called universal generalization. In other words, we can say if pc holds for any arbitrary element c, then we can conclude for all x, px. Let's discuss one problem in order to understand this in a better way. Justify that if for all x, px implies qx and for all x, qx implies rx are true, then for all x, px implies rx is true, where the domain of all quantifiers are same. Okay, so let's see be some arbitrary element. Here, first we will write our first premise, that is for all x, px implies qx. Second premise is for all x, qx implies rx. From the first premise, we can derive pc implies qc, because we are considering some arbitrary c, right? Here we can write c instead of x, so we can replace this x by c, so this becomes pc implies qc. This is from universal instantiation, okay? And similarly, you can write QC implies RC from second, right? Here you can write QC implies RC. This is done again with the help of universal instantiation. Now, from third and fourth, we can write PC implies RC. This is done by the help of hypothetical syllogism from three and four, right? PC implies RC is true because PC implies QC is true and QC implies RC is true. This is done by the rule of hypothetical syllogism. Now, from 5, we can do one thing. If PC implies RC is true, then for all x, PX implies RX has to be true. This is done by universal generalization. Okay? Simple, right? If PC implies RC for some arbitrary C, if this is true, then for all x, PX implies RX has to be true. 
So this is the use of universal generalization and that's it. I'll see you in the next lecture.